We now move on to our ongoing annual legislation meeting in China. Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao laid out economic and social development targets for this year in his government work report, and we look at some of the highlights. China's GDP will grow at 7.5% this year compared to 7.8% in 2012, and they're targeting 3.5% for the Consumer and Price Index, which measures inflation. Last year's figures was at 2.6%. In terms of social welfare, the government wants to raise basic pensions for retirees by 10%. It will be the ninth consecutive year that the government raises pensions. In terms of the labor market, more than 9 million jobs will be created in the urban areas. Now, in his last government work report, Premier Wen also urged the country to be relentless in pushing for reform. We should guide all the people to shift the focus of their work to speed up the transformation of China's growth model, adjust the economic structure, and improve the quality and performance of economic growth. That's how we can promote sustained and healthy economic development. In light of these considerations, we believe this year's economic growth target of 7.5 percent is necessary and appropriate, and we need to work hard to achieve it. For more on the NPC and China's future, we're joined by Stephen Roach, senior lecturer and senior fellow for the Jackson Institute for Global Affairs at Yale University. Welcome back to Biz Asia America. Great to have you here, Stephen. Great to see you, Phil. Um, just as a preface for our viewers who don't know Stephen, he is uh, not just a professor, but he is also a veteran of the well, banking industry in Hong Kong and Asia, primarily a uh, former chief at Morgan Stanley. So you witnessed firsthand on the ground a lot of these changes that have happened in China over the past couple of decades, specifically this past decade, what do you think the biggest achievement has been? Well, I've had a lot of great experiences in watching China grow and development. One that um, comes back to me as I see Premier Wen uh, on your screen is being in Beijing literally six years ago when he first uttered uh, the famous comment about China's economy being unstable, unbalanced, uncoordinated, and ultimately unsustainable. That set in motion a debate as to where China needed to go to address those so-called four uns. The debate's over, and now it's time for the next generation to get on with the transformation. You know, I mean, to be fair, in the media world, we make it sound very easy. It was at this number, now it's at this number, so it's, so it's grown a thousand percent. But we forget the Asia financial crisis back in 97. That was a very serious, eye-opening event for the entire region. Then you had a serious medical issue. You recall SARS. I mean, there were a, lot, well, yeah, yeah. There were a lot of significant <laughs> hiccups that this growth might not have happened. Do, do you think that a lot of the ways that they overcame all these issues was because of how organized perhaps the government was or, or how united they were to fight against all these issues and challenges that were facing Well, I think them. it's a combination of um, strategy, number one, to have a, a model that could um, bring together many of the policy actions, but then determination, tactics, uh, having a lot of savings and therefore a, a reservoir of financial uh, I mean, in reserves. The end, in the end, it all worked. It, it worked, Mostly. But, but the point that the Premier has been stressing is the days of just focusing on the quantity of growth are nearing an end. China really needs to restructure and rebalance its economy and draw on reforms to focus on the quality of growth. And that's a different set of challenges that the new leadership now faces. Uh, let's, let's, take, let's go with that new leadership the next decade. I mean, whether you're an investor or you're a citizen or you're, you're an interested party watching from the outside, there's a lot of interest in what's happening in the next couple of years, specifically with reforms and, of course, on the economic front. What should be the top priority, in your opinion? Top priority is to uh, put in place the reforms that will drive the transition from an export and investment-led growth model to one that is better balanced, deriving much more support from internal private consumption uh, and services, especially since services have a much smaller carbon footprint than manufacturing. Stephen, always good to have your insights on Biz Asia America. I want to thank you for your time. Great to see you. Stephen Roach, Yale University.